and we had this huge elephant ears out, just beautiful. You're in a situation where whatever happens next happens next. And again, he's a, he's a good elephant. He's not, he's not a violent elephant. They look at us for everything. Wolf, they encounter a problem. They don't think of a shit what you're doing. No. Wolf is on a totally different they wavelength. Survive, they're, they're totally different. And so even there, who has access to wild wolves that have grown up problem solving in the true wild? It's like, the, how do you test that intelligence? So same thing goes for, you know, elephants. Like the time that I've spent with wild elephants. When I'm so you, jealous of you for spending so much time with them. It's so I'm, cool. I, I, if I, I wish I could just like transport back to like 16 year old me and be like, dude, it's just wait. Yeah. <laughs> just wait. Yeah. Um, it's so, you know, because usually when you see elephants, you, you pull up next to them in a truck and there's people taking pictures and the elephants are kind of, you know, they're, they're not thrilled about being watched, usually. Every now and then you get that one individual, um, when I'm out with Vetpaw, there's this one, Dingane is awesome, beautiful, huge elephant. Um, he's one of the, he's one of, there's a problem happening right now where, got to get this right or else people come after me, poaching has has brought down the size of African elephant tusks to the point that some African elephants don't even have tusks. It's a huge genetic problem. It's a huge genetic the last problem. Century. Yeah. An elephant without tusks is is a huge problem. That's a terrible shame. Um, and so on Buffalo Kloof, where they're doing such incredible work, they, they've brought in Dingana to mate with the with the matriarchs of these other herds, and he carries the big tusk gene, the huge tusks. Mm. And so we really want to have him pass that on. So he was young and he came to the reserve with a with a collar on, a transmitter, so they could always know where he was in case he broke out. Instantly there'd be people trying to kill him. So to keep for his own safety, he had to have that collar on. And uh, last year, not that long after I talked to you, a couple months after I talked to you, we went to Buffalo Kloof, we were out with the Vetpaw team and we got the chopper in the air. And this was a collaboration between Jungle Keepers and Vetpaw where we said, we're gonna get Dingane's collar off. Mm. And so now Buffalo Kloof is the reserve. This is where this elephant exists. This is where all the other elephants exist. And so they have uh, helicopters. They, they, they have their own helicopters. And so they got the chopper in the air. We went out, they darted him. Dr. Will Folds is incredible veterinarian. The entire team, all the staff from Buffalo Kloof, all the vet paw guys, everybody comes in. They take the collar off. We do some checking of the vitals. Everything that needed to be done veterinarily got done on Dingane. Everybody gets out of there. This elephant stood up. And we had this huge elephant ears out, just beautiful without the collar. And so he's free now. And we got to, that was, that was one of the most amazing things that I've ever gotten to see. But he's one of the few elephants that he'll come up to the car and just hang out. Mm. Like if he's over there and we stop, you know, cause you don't go on foot. You, you can pull up, you can look at an elephant. That's fine. But out of respect and out of safety, you don't get out of the car. It's dangerous. He's one of the few elephants that'll just like come up. He'll just hang out. He'll pull up some grass, he'll chew, he'll like look at you guys, you know. Very curious elephant, very friendly elephant. He actually like goes near where the uh, the owners of the reserve have their house on the hill in the reserve, right in the center of everything. And he'll actually just like go up to their house and just start breaking branches off their tree and they have to like chase him away. And like mm. he enjoys it, you know, he's, yeah. just, he's just being a pain in the ass. He just likes the attention. So the, human, the humans he's come to know are ones who are kind and... Let him go where he wants to go, help him out, obviously. Like, yeah. they're very smart, so they're able to figure that out. But there's still a lot of elephants that, you know, the most dangerous thing that can happen in the wild is being head to head with an elephant. You're oh, done. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of elephants that, understandably so, because of the brutal slaughters that they have been yeah. put through over the last century or so, you know, they, they don't fuck with humans. No, they don't fuck with humans. Um, we were. We were on this road and we're watching the females and the babies and there's a light rain and we're taking pictures and we're all kind of chilling. We're kind of like, you know, sitting up on the doors and taking pictures and the elephants know we're there. They're right up against us. And then uh, Connor at Vetpaw is just like, uh, guys, 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 we look down the road and the biggest bull on the reserve, this this bull Kester mm. is coming. It came like a black cloud. It looked like a thunder cloud. This thing walked down the road. And everyone, it was just like, get in the car. We might have to back up. It was just, you just don't know. Is it staring at you? He's looking at us. His ears are out. You know, he's just like, this is my road. Why are you, you know, you're, you're so at their mercy. If they want to flip the truck, they flip the truck. They want to crush your skull, they crush your skull. You feel the control. We Every day we're like, if I want to go do that, you no longer have you want. You're in a situation where whatever happens next happens next. 
and again, he's a, he's a good elephant. He's not, he's not a violent elephant, but you're on your best behavior. Oh yeah. Around. It's a, it's, it's actually a very humbling experience being around an elephant like that, a big dominant male. They actually, I, th I believe that he killed another one of the males that he either, I forget if he gored him or pushed him off of a cliff, but. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and that was another one that they had brought on with the big tusk gene that they were really hoping was going to mate and make the elephant population there grow and everything else. And this guy was just like, nah, that's not, no, that's not going to happen. Here. That's not going to happen. I'm king of this jungle. Yeah. Have you, besides that one you just laid out though, have you personally, like when you've been on the ground, not in a truck, had any close calls with elephants in India or Africa? Not in Africa. Africa, I've always been extremely responsible and always followed the rules. Um, <laughs> but India. But, <laughs> but India. Um, yeah, I was I was out one day and I was I actually was trying to be very, very careful. Um, I was already very aware of how dangerous elephants could be. And in India, you have wild elephants living in between human society of a billion people and elephants the south india has the largest remaining population of asian elephants so this 